Hello everybody, Mr. Beerick here with your third video on how to use a Chromebook. Yesterday some of you came to me and said you were having trouble logging into the Chromebook. Some things went wrong in the initial setup. Uh, remember, one of the biggest things I saw was that people were either using Guest or they were using their personal Gmail accounts or they had not set up their Scholar account by changing their password at the end of the school year. So remember, to get the most out of this Chromebook to have it work the most effectively you've got to log in as a WAS Scholar account because that's how we have it, have it set up so it's you log in using your first name dot last name at wasscholar.org don't use guest don't use your personal gmail accounts also if you haven't changed your password in the last year you need to go to the IS office or you need to go to room 204 when a class is not in session there. If you log into one of those computers using your first name dot last name, don't need to put the WAS Scholar on at that point, it will automatically, it will force you to change your password and that will activate your WAS Scholar account. But if you have any password questions, go to the IS office and they will help you there. When you first start the uh, Chromebook up, it, you want to connect to the CB setup Wi-Fi network. This is just initially for setting up your Chromebook, hence CB. The password is temporary. You will log in using that network. Once you log in using your Raw Scholar account, it's going to download a profile for our Wi-Fi network Walk Chromebooks. And so in the future that you will always log in to that Wi-Fi network. The CB setup Wi-Fi is temporary, hence the temporary password. This is your Chromebook. Don't pick it up by the screen. Don't pick it up by the screen. I've said it a million times, just trying to encourage you not to pick it up by the screen so you don't break your Chromebook. The back of it, you'll notice that there are a few USB ports. There's a USB 3.0, 2.0 port. There's HDMI out. There's obviously a headphone jack that does have a little webcam in the front of it. SD card slot. So there are plenty of ways you can store stuff locally on this Chromebook. Uh, there's 16 gigs of local storage space, but please, I just encourage you, do not save stuff locally whenever you can. Always save stuff to your Google Drive. Because again, if your dog eats your Chromebook, I can give you a new one. You log in and everything will be there for you. Your settings for your Chrome web browser, your files, etc. So always save stuff to the cloud whenever you possibly can. And I'll show you Google Drive here in a second. A little trick here, control alt question mark held at the same time is going to uh, show you uh, some shortcut keys. So you, you press that key combination, let go, and then hold down say the shift control combination and then these keys are going to light up to show you what kind of shortcuts are available. So that's a super handy uh, thing there to try to navigate so you can navigate more quickly around your Chromebook. If you click on the little uh, set of squares down here, this is essentially like an app menu. There is one Get Started uh, app here. If you click on that, it's going to show you a series of videos on some of the basics of how to use your Chromebook, like setting up wallpaper and things like that. Really great place to start and just get to know your device a little bit better. Again, so that you can use it a little bit more efficiently. Some of you might think you can't do certain things that it probably can do. Getting started is a great place to get started to find out uh, what you can do. Right there, highlighted, get started. Okay, if you click on this blue folder, which is also under your apps menu, that is essentially your file manager. So there are two places where you can be storing files. One in your downloads folder, that is the local folder, folder on the Chromebook. So if you store everything in downloads and then your Chromebook is destroyed in a fire, then you will lose all this stuff. I would lose all these screenshots. Even when I get a new Chromebook, I'm not going to have those things anymore, most likely. So what you want to do is you want to get in the habit of saving stuff to your Google Drive. All right, so that is actually all these files are not stored locally on the on the Chromebook, but they're up on the cloud. So if my son chucks my Chromebook into the pool in West Chicago, then I can get a new one and I will be able to find all these files. So important difference there. So for example, when you download something from the from the web using your Chromebook, it's automatically going to go into the downloads folder. All right, probably there is a way that you can designate it 
to go into Google Drive with a, an extension, they call it, but most of the time it's going to go into the download. So if you want to save something to the Google Drive, you simply can drag and drop those download files into your Google Drive. On the right hand side down here where it says US and actually right to the next to it, that little icon, if you click on that it's going to show you some settings that you can uh, play with. Obviously this is where you can change what Wi-Fi network you are connected to. So if you're connected to like WaGuest or something like that and you want to change to Wa Chromebooks then you would click here and it will show you your different options. Um, so you can, uh, obviously there's settings and different things in there that you can play with. Here's your volume as well. Battery life is also set up there. The battery life of a Chromebook is typically seven to eight hours, kind of depending on how you use it. So if you're getting battery life that's dramatically less, bring it to me and we can uh, deal with that. Working offline is something that I said that you would be able to do with the Chromebooks for certain things. And actually, if you go to the web Chrome store, there are some apps that allow you to work online for certain things. Like, for example, watching movies. There, I saw an app for that. Um, so you can, can look for those things. But in terms of doing papers and presentations offline, you would go to your Google Drive to make sure that that's enabled. So it's very likely that right now you cannot work offline on your Chromebook because it doesn't necessarily come set up that way. So how do you do that? Go to Google Drive. Remember the icon for the Google Drive looks like this. So you click on that icon and then it will take you here and then this is where all your files are stored online. Under more there is an option called offline and then it will say over here enable offline editing and explain that to you and then there's a button here to go ahead and do that so you're gonna wanna do that as soon as possible obviously that gives you some offline uh, editing capability particularly for Google Documents, Google Presentation and Google Spreadsheets so the last thing I want to talk about is one of the technology myths that file management is stupid teachers think that students think that file management is indeed stupid that they don't have to worry about it and I think this is one of the biggest life skills that you can develop. I see many students that they lose their files because they just don't organize it in the right way they don't manage their files well the excuse of I can't find that or I just lost it is going to look comical to people in the future especially when you get to college and into the workplace so how do you manage your file if we go to Google Drive you will notice that my drive here has a lot of folders it is and, and that is the key I think is just to make sure that you create folders to put files in to do that you click the create button you click folder and then you name your folder. Sometimes I see in students drives it says new folder, new folder one, new folder two, give the names purpose. So I teach cultural history, I have a cultural history folder, and I have an instructional technology folder, etc. So and then of course within those folders you're going to have subfolders. Alright, so I have my handouts here, maps in this folder, presentations, readings, etc. This is not rocket science, it's just a matter of doing it. The other thing is, in terms of file management, that you want to make sure that you do is to name things that make sense. A lot of times, students will create a file and the default name is untitled and then they will leave it that way. So they go to submit a file for a uh, class and it'll say Untitled Document 1, Untitled Document 2, 3, 4, and they can't quite remember which one it is. They start rooting through each document. It's a waste of time. So obviously, name your files with purpose as well. So for example, it's pretty clear that this is the final exam for military history. So just encourage you to do that. If you have any questions about that, let me know. One thing, uh, you can drag and drop within Google Drive as well, which is pretty nice to, to do. So another little tip. If you have any questions, find me in the lower library.